Okay guys, if you remember last week, we talked about Moses and we talked about he was put in a basket by his mum and find, found by Pharaoh's daughter and he went on to be brought up in the Pharaoh's palace. Now, what happened to Moses was when he grew up, he became sort of like, um, you know, uh, um, an important person in Pharaoh's uh, court in the king's like the king's court if you like so he became an important person um and um he saw all around him that his people the israelites were being um, persecuted by the egyptians you know they were being made to make um bricks out of mud and straw and things like that and um he saw that the Egyptians were treating the, his people, the Israelites, really badly, you know. They were, he saw them beating them up and punishing them and not giving them enough to eat and all those kind of things. And eventually one day he saw uh, an Egyptian guard actually killing, um, sorry, beating um, a, a, an Israelite. So Moses went over and beat this Egyptian guard to death. He killed him. And of course he got scared because um, somebody found out. So he ran away and went to live um, far away in a, plank, in, a, in a place called Midian. Um, and there he sort of met his missus, his wife, Zipporah. Um, and he was like a shepherd really. He looked after a load of sheep and he did very well for himself. Now, in his older age, when he got older, um, one day he was out on the moors, uh, well the hills like you can see around us today and he saw um, a bush on fire. Now he looked at this bush for a bit and thought what's going on there now? He saw the bush and actually you know as it was burning it wasn't actually kind of like disappearing in the fire and he got a bit a bit a little bit closer and um, God spoke to him and said Moses I'm the Lord your God you know um, you've got to take your sandals off because where you stood near this bush is holy ground it's where I am so um, he kind of took his shoes off and God said to him what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you back to Egypt to take me people out of the country okay it's going to be a tough job but you're the man for it Moses was like, are you having a laugh, God? There's no way that they'd trust me to do that. And God said to him, listen, Moses, I'll prove to you that I'm going to do it. That staff that's in your hand, like a big stick that you use for its shepherding, that's in your hand, he said, Lord said to him, throw it on the floor and see what happens. So Moses throws his stick on the floor and it turned into a snake. And then the God said, right, okay, pick it up. And Moses said, are you sure? And God said, trust me, Moses. So he sort of picks up the snake and as he picks it up, he gets his hands on it, it turned back into his staff again. So Moses thinks, right, okay, well, I'll trust you then. God says, right, go back to Egypt. I'm going to let the Pharaoh take you and my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And I'm going to take you to the promised land, okay? A land flowing with milk and honey. So Moses says, right, okay, um, this is not the job for me. I'm an ordinary guy. I need somebody to help me. So he says, right, I will call. I'll send your brother Aaron with you as well. He can speak up for you. You've got to go and speak to Pharaoh and ask him to let you go. But Pharaoh is hard of heart, okay? That means he's mean, he's wicked. He's probably not going to let the Israelites go easily because he's got them slaves, and they're all slaves, building bricks for his big palaces and all that kind of place. And he won't want to let him go. And he, he, I'll demonstrate my power to him. And eventually he'll let him go. So trust me, just go. So Moses said, right, okay. So he goes to see Pharaoh. And he says, listen, Pharaoh. The Lord, my God, has said to me that I've got to come to you and ask to let my people go. So Pharaoh says, why would I do that? So Moses says, because the Lord, my God, is all powerful he can do anything and what i'm going to demonstrate that by throwing this stick on the ground this staff on the ground and it'll turn into a snake so he throws his staff on the ground and it turns into a snake and pharaoh says now nah, i'm not having that and he fetches his three magicians okay and they all come along and they throw their sticks on staffs on the ground and they turn into snakes as well 
but Moses' snake devours, eats up the other three snakes. But this doesn't bother Pharaoh too much. So Moses says, right, I'll tell you what, Pharaoh, the Lord your God is going to send a plague to this land. He's going to send some uh, blood and turn all the water, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, everywhere into blood. So Pharaoh says, right, do what you want. So he goes away and everything turns to blood. All the water in the land turns to blood. And, Ver and Moses comes and it stinks. It's horrible because once blood starts to rot away, it's horrible. So he goes back to Pharaoh. Moses goes back to Pharaoh and says, now will you let me people go? And Pharaoh says, I'm not letting your people go for that. I've got magicians who can do the same thing. And the magicians, they turn water into blood. So he says, no, I'm not letting your people go. So Moses says, right, okay, we're going to send you other plagues. So now you'll have to forgive me because I can't remember all of these. But basically, week after week, God sends loads of different plagues. And there's 10 different plagues. Now there's things like gnats. So he sends like gnats to cover the land and bite everybody and the cattle and drive everybody insane with the biting gnats. He sends flies to go everywhere and get in everybody's porridge and all kinds of things. He sends frogs everywhere, so he sends a plague of frogs. Now, what happened was all the frogs, they jumped in everybody's rooms and houses and bedrooms and they went in people's beds and everywhere. And then they all died and it stunk to high heaven. Still, each time after every plague, Moses went to Pharaoh said, let my people go. Pharaoh said, no, I'm not letting your people go. Eventually, it got really bad. He sent locusts to devour everything. So they ate all the crops, all the trees, everything. He sent hail. So hail crashed down as big as footballs, crashed through all the plants and trees and all that kind of thing. Um, and eventually... It came to the point where Pharaoh said, right, I'll let you people go. And then, just as he was about to let him go, he said, no, I'm not letting him go. Okay, so eventually God said, right, I'm going to do one last plague, and this time Pharaoh will let you go. But what I want you to do is I want you to take some blood and splash it over the doorposts and the tops of the door where my people live so where all the Israelites live I want you to cover the post and the door the tops of the door in blood so that when the angel of death comes it won't harm the people who live inside those houses but when it comes to those people's houses the Egyptians houses where the Egyptians live it's gonna kill all the firstborn sons okay so and all the firstborn of the livestock and everything is going to just die like that. So all the firstborn sons were like, who were like your eldest brother or something like that. They were all going to die. Okay. And God said, I'm going to send this because the Pharaoh's heart is so hard. He won't let my people go. Okay. So he sent this plague. The Israelites covered their doorposts and the angel of death passed over the doors. Now, believe it or not. The Jewish people, the Israelites as they're known today, the Jewish people still celebrate the Passover or what we call the Passover because the angel of death passed over those people. Okay, so God, really powerful, kills everybody, all the firstborn. And he's, Moses turns up to Pharaoh and says, are you going to let us go now? And Pharaoh says, yeah, just go, go, get out of here, get out of here as quick as you can. In fact, we're going to give you all our gold and silver. Just leave us, leave the land. So Moses says, right, folks, come on, let's go. So he takes them all and they all head off into the desert and go towards the Red Sea, towards the promised land. OK, so the Red Sea is like a big sea between Egypt and Israel where the Israelites live now, we call it, it wasn't called Israel in them days, it was called um, the Promised Land or Canaan, I think it was called, something like that. So anyway, they get to the Red Sea, and as they get to the Red Sea, they, they discover that Pharaoh has decided that he, he actually doesn't want to let the Israelites go, and so he sends out his army to go and bring them back. And he, he's at the front of the army, so the Israelites ride out in the chariots and on the horses and all that, and they're chasing after the Israelites, and eventually 
they get to the Red Sea. And the Israelites, Moses has, has been told by God, listen, lift up your staff like this over the Red Sea and I'll part the waves and you'll be able to walk through the Red Sea on dry ground. So amazing, imagine that. You know, you get to the sea and you lift up your staff and God says, I will part the sea. So God is powerful enough to do that, believe it or not, folks. I know it sounds like amazing, but God is capable of many, many miracles. So he lifts up his staff, Moses, God parts the Red Sea and the Israelites walk through the sea on dry ground with huge walls of water on either side of them. OK, and just as they get to the other side, the Egyptians, the Pharaoh on his, and his, on his horses and in the chariots and all them come galloping through the Red Sea. And God says, right, I'm going to get you now. And what do you think he did then? OK, so what he does is just as the Israelites step onto the other side of the Red Sea and go towards the promised land, God lets the water from the Red Sea come crashing back down on Pharaoh's army. So he crashes the water back down on Pharaoh's army. Um, Pharaoh and all his army drown. The Israelites get away and everybody lives happily ever after. The Israelites go to the promised land. Imagine that. It's just brilliant. It actually happened. It's a true story. Amazing. Thank you, God.